Here I have an equation um, of the reaction of uh, strontium nitrate and sodium carbonate to form strontium carbonate and sodium nitrate. Okay, um, and what we want to do with this equation is let's say I have um, uh, 7.05 grams of my strontium nitrate and I'm reacting that with 5.24 grams of sodium carbonate. And I want to know which one will be used up first. Okay, we call this the limiting reagent because one of these will be used up first and then there's not going to be any more to react and so it limits how much of the products can be formed. Okay, so First of all, whenever we have a chemical equation, we must make sure it is balanced. So we always balance our chemical equation. And here we know, notice that uh, we have two nitrate ions. Okay, so over here we need two as well. And we only have one, so I put two of these. Now I have two NaNO3, so uh, that gives me two nitrate ions to balance. And it also gives me two sodium ions. Well, I have the two sodium ions there, and I just double check my carbonates and the strontium, they are balanced as well. So all I needed to do was put a two in front of that NaNO2, NaNO3 rather, sodium nitrate. And uh, that is a balanced equation. Okay, so now, um, which one of these is going to be used up? first. Okay. I can't directly, because you might, you might look at this and say, well, I have less of this one, so obviously that one's going to be used up first. No. Um, I have to uh, remember that in the equation, these are, it's saying one mole of strontium nitrate will react with one mole of sodium carbonate. Okay. Not one gram with one gram. So I need to first convert these to moles and then decide what my limiting reagent will be. Okay, so it's a, a two-step process. Um, I need to do this for the strontium nitrate as well as for the sodium carbonate. And that means I need the molar mass of each of these. Um, and so I'll, uh, I'll start here with the strontium. We have strontium, nitrogen, and oxygen. And if you look on the periodic table, you will get these values, 87.62 uh, grams per mole uh, for strontium. Nitrogen is 14.01, oxygen is 16.00. Okay, then the question, and of course all of these are grams per mole. The question then is, how many of each do I have? Well, I have one strontium. I have two of everything inside those parentheses. So that's two nitrogen, and then two sets of, of three oxygen, or six oxygen. Okay, so two nitrogen, six oxygen. Okay, uh, my two nitrogen, this will give me 28.02 and the 6 oxygen will give me uh, 96.00, okay? And I add that in with my 87.62, and when I uh, add these up, I get, uh, let's see what we have here. Um, 7 and 8 is 15, and 6 is uh, 21. And that makes 10 and uh, 21 there. So I have 211.64 grams per mole. Okay, that's for the strontium nitrate. Now, let's do the same thing for my sodium carbonate. It's made from sodium and carbon and oxygen. And uh, sodium is 22.2. 99 nine, carbon 12.01 oxygen 16.00 okay 
look at how many of each I have. I have two sodium. I have one carbonate, or rather one carbon and three oxygen. So I multiply those. And here I'll have 45.98. Um, uh, here I'll have uh, just the same 12.01. And this one times three, that will be 48.00. Okay. Add those ones together. And uh, 0.99. And then I have uh, 7 and 15. Uh, and that'd be 6 and 10. So 105.99 grams per mole. Okay. So now that I have the formula masses for these two compounds, I can find out how many moles there are for each of those. Okay. So how do I do that? 7.05 grams of my strontium nitrate. Start with that, and then what am I going to do with this molar mass for the strontium nitrate? Okay. Well, I need those grams to cancel, so that needs to be on the bottom. My moles will be on top. Okay. So I'll have one mole, 211.64 grams, like so. Okay. And uh, before I calculate that, let me go ahead and uh, set up the next one, which is I'm going to start with my 5.24. Uh, grams of sodium carbonate. Okay. Now this one, I set it up exactly the same way to one mole of my uh, sodium carbonate. I should be more specific here and, and, and refer to the strontium nitrate. Okay. But uh, this time I'm going to use the molar mass of the sodium carbonate which is 105.99. Okay, so there's my molar mass, grams per mole, just putting it on the bottom so it flips it around. And uh, this will, in both cases, convert from grams to moles of that compound. Okay, now there's one other thing that I need to take into account. And it doesn't really do much in this particular example, but uh, you'll notice I have one mole reacts with one mole. If I have one mole of strontium nitrate reacting with five moles of sodium carbonate, my sodium carbonate would be used up much faster, and I would need to take that into account when I'm uh, finding the limiting reagent, okay? Because I might have more of the sodium carbonate, but if it's uh, being used up much more quickly, then, um, you know, I have to account for that because it'll still be used up before the other one. So, in essence, what we do is um, we can just uh, find the moles of our product. And, and I'm going to to say, let's, let's find out, um, in the end, we want to know how many grams of strontium carbonate uh, can we produce from combining these two, okay? Um, and so it, it's, it's all one-to-one. -one. So there's one mole of strontium carbonate that is produced from every uh, one mole of my sodium carbonate, okay? That needs to cancel there. My moles of sodium carbonate will cancel, and this will tell me how many moles of strontium carbonate I can produce. I'll do the same here before I calculate that. One mole of strontium nitrate, okay, produces one mole of strontium carbonate, okay. Again, these numbers come from the balanced equation. It just so happens that these are all balanced with uh, ones, okay? One mole of strontium nitrate, that's this one, right? Produces one mole of strontium carbonate, that's this one, okay? This is my mole ratio. One mole of strontium carbonate is produced from 
one mole of sodium carbonate. That's those ones, all right? There's my uh, mole ratio set up so that I have the moles of the compound that I'm uh, using in that setup so that it will cancel, okay? Now I have moles of strontium carbonate. I have the same thing. So when I calculate this, I can compare these two numbers and uh, determine which one is going to be the limiting reagent, okay? Because this, the smaller of these two numbers is going to tell me uh, the one that uh, can, can't produce as much strontium carbonate if it were all used up. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug this in. And we have uh, 7.05 uh, grams divided by 211.64. Okay, divided by 211.64. And what I end up with is 0 0.0333. Okay, and uh, just for the sake of having some extra significant figures since I'm going to go on and calculate again after this. I'm going to put on a couple of more numbers there. And this would be what units? Moles of strontium carbonate. Okay. Do the same here and I have 5.24 divided by this time 105.99 And normally, you know, I would take this into account, but since they're both ones, it doesn't really make any difference. It's just for the unit aspect of it, okay? Uh, 0 0.0494, uh, and again, a couple extra numbers to avoid rounding errors. Okay, so what we find here, uh, you look at these and you say, okay, this first one, my 7.05 grams of strontium nitrate, it actually gets used up first. In other words, it can't produce as much of the strontium carbonate as if I were able to react all of the 5.24 grams of, um, of sodium carbonate. Okay, if all of this one were reacted, I could get uh, 0.05 moles just about, okay? Whereas this one, I could only get 0.03 moles. So uh, even though this original number was larger, okay, because it's much heavier, I have fewer moles, um, and so I can't produce as much of the product. So this limits how much of the product I can uh, form. So this is my uh, limiting reagent, okay? also known as a limiting reactant. So at this point now, um, uh, for this uh, problem, I'm not so much concerned with my uh, reagent in excess. I wanna know, uh, based on my limiting reagent, how much product I can actually form in grams, okay? So I know I can form 0 0.0333 moles of strontium carbonate. Now, how many grams is that? So you see, we're doing that same process like we've done before. Grams of A to moles of A, use the molar mass, and then you get to moles of B using the mole ratio from the balanced equation. In this case, it was our one to one. So we've done this much already for both of those. And now we need to take it that last step to go to grams of B. Okay, and uh, so at this point, and that's why I didn't want to round this off uh, too soon, because I'm still going to use uh, that in a calculation uh, to find the grams, and I didn't want to introduce rounding errors. Okay, so I'm going to use the molar mass this time of B, or my strontium carbonate, since that's what I'm interested in. And uh, so I need to add that up. I've got my strontium, carbon, and oxygen. Three oxygen, one of uh, the other two. So here I have uh, 87.62. Comes from the periodic table, again, all of these. 
and um, I'm going to go ahead and multiply this out. 16.00 times 3. Um, and uh, then we add this together. And uh, this will give me um, 9, 10, and 14. Okay, 147.93 grams per mole. All right, so where am I going to put this one now? Well, this time I need moles to cancel, right? Because that's what I'm starting with. So I need moles on the bottom and grams on the top. So I'm going to put my number on the top since it's grams per mole, grams per uh, one mole of my strontium carbonate. Okay, and now I can calculate um, exactly how much uh, will be produced. Um, so I have that uh, point zero three 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 one one, and I multiply that by one forty seven point nine. Okay, so I get 4.9, and this time this is the, the final answer, so I can round this off to, um, to three significant figures, okay? Um, since three significant figures, since that is how many I started with in the beginning, okay? Um, let me go ahead and write a couple more, and then... Um, we'll round that to 4.93 grams of strontium carbonate. So this would be what kind of yield? This would be my theoretical yield because it's all on paper.